thanks first of all Ingrid for inviting me to speak because there's a lot you'll find out through this talk there's lots of people involved with this project and it just came the privilege came down to me to talk about it today um, so I'll just go on to the next slide here okay good so this project the tender went out from the THI um, and you'll see the sort of funders that were involved there it was part of a much bigger um, sort of redevelopment programme going on in Parkhead um, that the THI was running. Um, for our Weave Parkhead project, it was really all about the school. So you see the Westmere School at the bottom there. OK, so more about the Weave Parkhead team, as well as myself, who's a weaver and textile designer. There's also Anne Harrod McLaren, um, another weaver, textile designer, graduate of GSA as well. Um, Lauren Day, another graduate of GSA, hand embroiderer. Um, Bespoke Atelier, who are printmakers based in Glasgow. Um, we also had Kathy Becker involved as a natural dye specialist. Carolyn, who's also going to speak later in this talk. And the whole project was delivered and managed by North Light Heritage, but in particular Ingrid. She's just being very modest, not putting her name in there, I think. <laughs> okay. So um, the tender that went out, you'll see at the top, um, that's the Parkhead School. Um, it's currently a lot of work's been going into it, and this is like the architectural drawing at the bottom um, of what it will look like. So it'll be reopening next spring, eventually. Sort of <laughs> maybe a year later than, yeah, anyway. So in the middle of there, um, you'll see where the two buildings join. There's a sort of foyer. And in the tender, what the THI was asking for were for artists or weavers to come in and design um, four sort of artist panels to go into this space. They wanted them to sort of talk about the heritage of Parkhead because this building is going to be used as a sort of community hub and um, business centre. Um, so it's sort of a public space and that's where the panels were going to end up. Okay, so just in case you don't know where Parkhead is, that's an aerial view. Um, the way, what makes it really distinctive is the Parkhead Cross, so it's kind of like five roads that meet all together. On this map, the yellow areas are the, like conservation areas and the purple areas are the key THI projects. I think that's right, yeah. Um, so obviously there as well, looking from above, you can see Celtic Park. So if that gives you a sort of idea of exactly where we are. And at, towards the top, the Forge Shopping Centre. Um, I've just included this drawing just to show you how beautiful actually the Park Head Cross is. It's stunning, um, the architecture. It's one of the most intact um, crosses in Glasgow and probably like the, one of the most underappreciated. So just really beautiful, stunning drawing there to show you that. So what is Parkhead known for? The biggest thing, Celtic Park and the football. So from right from the beginning of the project, we kind of thought we want to make these four panels, but we kind of don't want them to be completely about the football. We want to get beyond that. Um, so this is the Beardmore Parkhead Forge site. Um, and if I press it next, you'll see that that is now where the shopping centre is on the, exactly the same site. Um, so that, again, was the other main thing that we knew Parkhead was famous for at the beginning of this project. OK, so this is a much older map here. So this is the 1700s. Um, at this time, um, Parkhead was really rural, it, like the city hadn't built up yet, so Glasgow was over in this direction. Um, so there was really two communities at this time. At Toll Cross, there was a community of weavers. And down at Westmuir, there was a, well, down at Toll Cross, sorry, up at West, 
know, there was a community of miners. So as these communities grew, they sort of grew into the cross, and that's where today's like development of Parkhead is. Okay, so this is a very happy bunch of weavers. <laughs> okay, so you'll see being a weaver in Parkhead wasn't always a happy occasion, and I think their boss in the middle looks quite in control. This is actually, in terms of weaving history, um, probably sort of later on when weaving started to move out of the home and more into sort of workshops and a sort of mill setting. So this would have been the time when the looms were starting to, get, like more technology was coming in and more production was coming in. Before that, um, weavers would be based in their homes. So this is Shintiha in what, well, it doesn't exist anymore, but it was there in Parkhead. And these would have been weaver's cottages, very similar to those you might know in Paisley, the small shop cottages there, or in Kilbark, and there's a really nice example of a weaver's cottage. So the same thing was going on in Parkhead, but this project was highlighting not many people knew that. So, um, as our sort of starting point for our research, me and Ingrid walked all around Parkhead and we also met up with the local um, history society and they told us this rhyme. So this is the directions to the weavers. So the first thing we did, we had like a launch event um, in the library and obviously there was cake, a Parkhead cake, because we always like to begin a project with the cake to get people talking. Um, we brought together all our research and also um, our other bit of research just from our walk around Parkhead at the initial stages of this project was we found um, this sort of logo on a building, this motif. So the Beehive Crest at Westmere Street. Um, you'll see this actually became a really important thing in our project. Um, the this exists from a time when William Thompson um, set up one of the first cooperatives in the whole of Britain. Um, and we thought that was something that Parkhead should be really proud of, that they, someone in Parkhead had created one of the first cooperatives. We also thought it was a really nice symbol for Parkhead of people coming together and working together. Also in that first cooperative, it was the um, weavers and the miners working together. So, so this is how a sort of whole bee theme comes into our project. And again, it was a really nice starting point for um, going into schools and doing something practical um, and explaining to the children about their history that they should be proud that they had one of the first cooperatives. So that's us in the school making lots of bees. We also did, um, with this lovely little table loom, lots of weaving demos, um, showing them different weaving structures that the hand weavers would have used. Um, so they all had a go on that as well. Um, and you can see they also did a little bit of cardboard weaving. So that was um, Quarry Bray and St Michael's Primary that we went to. Here's Carolyn again. So <laughs> this is us. We also set up doing a similar thing in the Forge Shopping Centre. It was kind of as this project started, we quickly realised that by sitting with the loom, it was a great way to get people interacting with you. People come over, they want to have a go at the loom, see how that works, find out and be quite surprised that that's part of their history. But then also for us, it was a way to talk to them and start collecting ideas about what these artist panels might be. So we also had this sort of big loom that we carried around and people wrote sort of comments on and we were collecting them in that way as well. Okay, so that was sort of the first stage, the initial stage of research. And then me, Ingrid and Ang Harrod spent a day really sort of honing down all the information we had collected. 
and we came up with these four themes. So Radical Parkhead, based around, for those of you that don't know about weavers, weavers are often radical and political. Um, they're often the most educated, well, some of the most educated people in the past, and that's why they're so really fight political causes. Um, so the first panel we wanted to be about Radical Parkhead. The next one, more about just the place and the landscape. The third one, Maiden Parkhead. And the last theme was Parkhead People. Okay. So um, the brief had been to make these four artist panels and the original brief said they wanted them all to be woven. So this brief was set by the THI and we had to do a little bit of gentle explanation as to why you couldn't weave pictures on a normal loom, the sort of dobby looms that we use. And actually you need to, if you want sort of Im imagery <coughs> things, you need to weave on a jacquard loom, um, which really you need a mill to do for you. So our original plan was to get these four panels woven up in a mill, and then this happened. Um, so we basically, we had to change our plan, and actually this mill, based in Scotland, was doing us a massive favour and was going to produce these four panels for us at cost price, which would have been fantastic. But then, after however many 500 years that they'd been open, or longer, I don't know, <laughs> they closed down. Um, so change of plan at that point and actually it's made the project um, much more diverse I think and interesting. So the first panel was um, designed and woven by Anne Harrod. Um, up at the top I've put in a weaving structure There just so happens to be a weave structure called honeycomb. So because of all the bees that we'd been looking into we thought well, we need to use the honeycomb structure. That just seemed obvious. Um, you'll see the warping stakes, really large scale warping stakes. And at the bottom there is a dobby loom that is down in Nottingham, because that's where Anne Harrod is now lecturing, um, which she was kindly allowed to use to weave up this panel. So this, that loom there is very much the sort of loom that the hand weavers would have had when they were working at home before things kind of became more mechanised. I'll just put that little B in there to remind me. <laughs> okay, so the next thing was sort of, we now knew that each panel was going to be produced in a different way, so we wanted to choose a colour that was going to be used throughout all four designs to pull everything together, so that was really just the sign decision, but also Again, yellow seemed appropriate because of the whole bee theme at the beginning. This also gave the opportunity to like engage back and put on an event with the public back in Parkhead. So we had a sort of wild, we called it a wild weaving day, where we were doing natural dyeing, um, and that's Kathy Beckett there with the pots on the stove, dyeing up the yarn. So this is the yarn that actually got woven then into the panel by Anne Harrod. Um, so you can see this event was originally meant to be outside, but because of the lovely Glasgow weather, it got brought inside. So it was a, also an opportunity to exhibit all the work that had been done in the primary school. So you'll see like there weaving up at the back. and this lady enjoying sort of having a go at weaving on a big nice twig so this was the wild weaving element and um, once again it was just kind of finding that once people were sitting weaving it then the conversation started to be generating so all through this project it was kind of using weaving as a vehicle for that interaction okay so that is ang harrod's final panel um, on the right hand side it's a close up so you can see how like 3D the structure of the honeycomb is. The use of colour of black and sort of silvers at the top referring to the miners and the hand dyed yellow at the bottom of the panel. Ok 
Okay, so the second panel was designed by myself and actually we did get one panel woven up in a mill um, on the Jacquard looms. So the first thing, just in terms of design, was thinking these were the yarns that Cathy dyed and I had to make sure that this panel was going to tie into Anne Harrod's so we had to match up the colours from Humphrey's weaving. So this is the panel getting woven up um, at Humphreys on the Jacquard loom. Unfortunately, this photo doesn't show on a Jacquard loom. Basically, you have lots and lots of strings, so you can lift up individual threads and basically make whatever pattern you wanted. So if you think of paisley patterns, they're all woven on a Jacquard loom. You need that control. Okay, and then just a little bit about the design process for this. So the final, um, the panel that I designed was quite abstracted and all the scales were changed, um, but all the shapes were traced off original maps. So you see at the top there, it's the steel works and that's where these little squares came from. Also at the bottom, you'll see there's a sort of the honeycomb theme um, continues, but partly because we thought, um, we realised that the molecular structure for coal or carbon looked a bit like honeycomb, so that became a motif that I repeated across the panel. Um, so on this panel really it is the one that looks like a map. You've got the five-way cross in the middle, the river Clyde at the bottom, all the sort of like little squares and stuff were from the forge at the top. Every other little bit has been traced off another map. The two dots, they're much larger in scale, but that's actually the Celtic goalposts. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of, it's become a sort of abstracted artwork, but all the elements are still recognizable within it. Um, also on that panel, um, the actual weave structures that we use on the jacquard, so it was things like herringbone and twill, so it was all structures that would have actually been woven by the hand weavers. Okay, so the next panel um, came about because in our research we discovered that as well as like silks and linens and wools being woven in Parkhead, Metal was woven in Parkhead at the Springfield Wireworks. Um, and this was like a really interesting research point actually because we managed to get in touch with um, Graham Cousland, whose family actually owns Springfield Wireworks. And he really kindly donated the last roll that was actually woven in Parkhead. So we thought we must use this for this panel. Okay, so you can just see Lauren behind here. Um, Lauren's a hand embroiderer and she's one of the most patient people in the world, I think. <laughs> she's, so this wire mesh, she, um, it was 70,000 chain stitches she sewed into the wire mesh. And she decided to use a chain stitch because we also discovered that there was a uh, big rope works in Parkhead as well. Um, she based her design on the steam hammer at um, Beardmore. Okay, so at the forge, the steam hammer, and you can see her lovely drawings and sort of designer's process there, working out how she was going to do it. And this photo doesn't give it any justice at all because for those that have seen the panels in reality, this one it's all about the light coming through the metal and the stitching and she's been really clever with the types of stitching to kind of get um, gloss and matte effects between the triangles. So that was the third one. Oh and there is Graham looking chuffed at our exhibition that his bit of metal ended up being used. Okay. So the final panel was designed by Bespoke Atelier, um, so Marion and Levon, who um, specialised really in screen printing. So once again, it was really nice to get back and do more workshops and really get back in the community for this one. 
So you can see they're tracing off all different elements of the buildings around Parkhead and generating lots of ideas in this workshop. Yvonne then went away and put together this amazing design. So it's got so many elements of loads of the buildings in Parkhead. You'll also notice at this point the rhyme from the beginning, the directions to the weavers is added. And of course, in the top corner, you couldn't forget to put the bees in as well. <laughs> OK, so at this point, I'm going to pass to Carolyn. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, so I enjoyed the project. Well, I was doing some of the kind of public consultation process with Ingrid and Sheila, but it was really um, as the planning for the first public exhibition was kind of starting. And with the primary school still being refurbished at this point in time now as well, yeah. um, we had to find a local space. Uh, George Smith of Imagio Gallery very kindly let us use his space in August 2015. Um, yep, we can make it work, that's good. Um, which was small but perfectly formed, it was great for our needs, um, and most importantly it was in the centre of Parkhead, so we could continue the discussion with um, all the locals. Um, allowed us to show the new panels beautifully, but also allowed us to bring in a lot of the materials that had been um, made during the workshop. You saw quite a lot of that from Sheila's slides. So that was including <coughs> the kind of textiles on Sheila's loom, um, an enormous amount of bees, we um, made a good swarm there, and the map weaving and the weaving cards to kind of make some bunting in the windows. So this all worked together really well to create a kind of vibrant, inviting space and unintimidating as well, so we could continue that dialogue with the locals for the duration of the exhibition. Um, in 2017, with some further funding, we we're, were able to do three more exhibitions across the city. The first being um, at Glasgow Kelvin College on their East End campus. And with this part of the project, we really wanted to take the opportunity to get the students involved. So it wasn't just kind of restaging the original exhibition, we were going to give them ownership pretty much of the whole event. Um, and we worked really closely with the staff and students on the NC and the NQ, Art and Design Courses Level 5, Level 6, um, and asked them to create a response to the exhibition as it had already been staged. Um, they were amazing. Um, it took a wee bit of guidance and a wee bit of support, um, but they really gave their all to the project. Um, we worked with them weekly for about two months, um, trying to get them through the logistics. But they came up with their own complementary narratives dealing with history, industry and identity. Um, they also handled the exhibition design, curation, interpretation, even helping out with the marketing and created a number of brand new artworks to be shown along the original pieces as well. So it was no mean feat, <laughs> they really went for it. Um, they also really took to um, the challenge of filling the space. I don't know if any of you have seen the space um, at that campus, but it's a huge big courtyard um, space that's kind of previously been overlooked and isn't really used very often. So um, they made a lot of, well they had the new artworks but they also made some site specific installations as well. The kind of wild weaving that Sheila was talking about before and um, we had that all over the railings and the staircases and also some um, screen printed weaving. Um, they also had large scale um, prints up on the balcony, etchings um, and even a sound installation so it got quite fancy. Um, they were quite shy at first, which was kind of normal for such a large-scale project, um, but the lead curators, as we took to calling them, that was uh, Kaylee, Gillian and Jess, they really threw their all into it every week. And with their enthusiasm and with all the support and encouragement from the tutors as well, um, by the end, um, by install day, everyone was chipping in and there was a really good buzz. Well, that's a horrible word to use in this context. There was a good buzz about <laughs> going. Um, and they really brought the space alive, um, considering the size of the space, it was, um, it was just amazing. Um, so this part of the project, as well as carrying on the legacy of the original kind of concept, um, we hope that it also gave the students themselves some really valuable experience in organising something of this level, which is really quite rare at college um, stage, and the tutors were really excited to help them out with that. So it gave them a lot of skills and experience that they can take on to their future careers that they might not have got otherwise. Um, we also, for the launch night, managed to get the catering students involved because uh, we thought it was really important to get as much of the college together <laughs> as possible. And they created an amazing canapes menu that went down a storm. Um, the head of college was so impressed um, with the event that he's now given 
be okay for more events of this kind, student-led and student-led exhibitions to go on in the space, which as I was saying before has kind of previously been overlooked. And after the show was over, we heard from the tutors that they'd actually been given full control of the space for the end of year kind of degree show, uh, college end of year shows, which they hadn't had previously, which is like a really good plus. I hope to see more going on in the future there. Then the exhibition travelled um, into the centre of the city at Glasgow City Heritage Trust, just a few days after it ran at the college actually. Um, and we included some of the works um, the students had made in this part of the exhibition because it just kind of matched up so well, um, both conceptually and visually, with the original project. Um, and it had its last hurrah in Finiston at the New Glasgow Society, um, along with um, kind of other engagement things through the way um, to carry on. Um, finally, I'll just wrap up because we're I think, a wee bit over time. Uh, <laughs> Um, all other projects really allowed um, engage with visitors across the city, but it was the Parkhead community and the partners that really shaped it from day one um, and allowed us to help them celebrate Parkhead's cultural heritage but also celebrate the kind of present um, residents there um, at this day. There is a huge amount of people to thank, as you can see from this helpful slide, so I'm not here all day, but we really have to give um, a special mention and thank you to Brian and Chris at Glasgow City Council. HLF and HES um, for the initial funding and for all the funders really for just giving us free reign to engage with the community as we saw fit and tell their story. Um, another last week, thank you to Imagine Gallery, Kelvin, um, Glasgow Kelvin College and their students of course, uh, Glasgow City Heritage Trust, New Glasgow Society and of course the amazing North Lake Heritage for their amazing work throughout and I'll leave it there.